Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a logarithmic equation. We have x ln x equals e, and we're going to be solving for x values. Great. So this is kind of like an interesting equation, even though it's very easy to solve. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of um, calculus here, looking at the graph from different angles, and uh, find all the solutions to this equation. You probably already guessed uh, one of the solutions, which is kind of obvious, because if you replace x with that, uh, I'm not going to say what it is, but you probably already guessed that. Anyways, so let's go ahead and do a little bit of uh, manipulation on this one. Since we have the ln function here, which is the natural logarithm, I would like to raise uh, both sides, e to the power both sides. So let's do e to the power, e to the power x ln x equals e to the power e. Awesome. And E is Euler's number, which is about 2.7. And Euler is a great mathematician, so needless to say, obviously, he's done a lot of great things. So now, what am I going to do? We know that E to the power ln something is that thing. So, like, if you have E to the power ln y, it can be written as y. You know that y needs to be greater than 0 in order for this to be defined. In our case, x needs to be positive. Okay, so... But before we do that, we don't have e to the power ln something, we have an x here. So how do you eliminate or get rid of that problem? You can move the x. So x becomes an exponent. We can write this as e to the power ln x to the power x equals e to the power e. And as you know, e to the power ln x to the power x is the same as x to the power x. As long as all the good requirements are met, you know, x needs to be positive, so on and so forth. All right, great. So now, this should tell you something. If x to the power x is equal to e to the power e, at least you can tell that x equals e is a possible solution, right? Because e to the power e equals e to the power e, right? Straightforward. Great. But the million dollar question is, is this the only solution? And you can kind of tell by looking at the graph of y equals x to the power x. I think we talked about this before. There were a couple problems where we examined the graph of x to the power x. As you know, it, it has a minimum at a point. Uh, at zero, it's undefined terms so there's a hole. And then uh, it's, first it decreases and then increases, so on and so forth. So by looking at that, you can get an idea. But I would like to look at something else. So I'm going to leave that to you. That exercise is left for the reader. And I would like to look at... So let's look at f of x equals x ln x. Now this function is more interesting. And at the end, I'm going to show you the graph of this. And you'll have a better idea what I'm talking about. So now, in order to understand how this function behaves, like where it increases, where it decreases, does it have a minimum or maximum, you know, any inflection points, so on and so forth, let's go ahead and differentiate it. So... If I take the first derivative from um, by using the product rule, uh, the derivative of x times ln x plus the derivative of ln x, 1 over x, times x. And the x's cancel out, and I end up with f prime equals ln x plus 1. And of course, with all the derivatives, I want to set it equal to 0 and find critical points. From here, we get ln x equals negative 1, and then if you do e to the power both sides, like before, you get the following, and e to the power ln x is equal to x, so you get x equals 1 over e, the reciprocal of e. e is about 2.7, so you can safely say that 1 over e is going to be, you know, uh, less than 0 0.4, because um, the reciprocal of 2.5 is 0 0.4, so it's going to be, um, you know, 0. Do something. Anyways, it's a small number between 0 and 1. Great. So now, does f have a minimum or maximum at this point? Or is it actually a maxima or a minima? Or is it really one of those, right? Doesn't have to be. So we could make a table. And we've done this before. You know, we could look at the interval where f is increasing, where f is decreasing. But this time, I know some folks have been asking me, like, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? So I'm, I'm going to do it this time. I'll use the second derivative test. Okay, great. So the second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative. 
And if you differentiate this ln x plus 1, you're going to get 1 over x because the derivative of 1 is 0, 1 is a constant, and it's a very simple derivative, right? Now, I don't want to set it equal to 0 because 1 over x can never be 0. But I, rather, I want to evaluate this at my critical point. So, what is the second derivative at 1 over e? And you can say safely say that 1 over 1 over e is just going to be e. Notice that the second derivative is positive at 1 over e. This tells us that f is going to be concave up uh, in that neighborhood. Okay, So since f is going to be concave up, and it's basically always going to be concave up, because remember, our function is only defined for positive x values. I think I said that, but I don't think I've written it. So x must be positive all the time. Therefore, 1 over x is always going to be positive, which means our function is f is always concave up, which means it doesn't have an inflection point and it has a minimum at x equals 1 over e. So f has a minimum at x equals 1 over e. Awesome. Like I said earlier, I'm going to show you the graph at the end. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the intervals where f is positive or negative. And you can also look at it where like, where does f increase and where does f increase. But let's go ahead and see where the function is positive or negative first. So we said that x must be positive. Now consider f of x equals x ln x. Now, and we know that f of 1 is 0 because ln 1 equals 0. So this kind of tells you that f changes sign at x equals 1. In other words, if x is between 0 and 1, then f of x is going to be negative because if you consider numbers that are between 0 and 1, like 1 half, 1 over e, then you plug them in, you're going to get negative values. If x is greater than 1, then f of x is going to be positive. All right? Great. So now let's go ahead and summarize what we know, and then I'm going to show you the graph of this function. Okay, quickly let's summarize what we have. f is defined for positive x values. It has a minimum at x equals 1 over e. And then it's negative for x between 0 and 1 and positive for x greater than 1. And all these facts are about f, not its derivative. And here's the graph of our function with all its glory, the graph of y equals x ln x. And as you can see here, it has a minimum at 1 over e, comma negative 1 over e, because that's what you get if you plug in x equals 1 over e. And it intersects y equals e at only one point, and that just happens to be e. This is an approximate value for it. As you can see here, that is going to be our point. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care, and bye-bye.